Well, it all began for me, um, I'll go right back to square one. My dad was born in 1920. He was a farmer. He went off to World War II, came back home, um, there was a bullet in his leg, and um, he raised 12 children. I'm the eldest of 12. And I recall one day, I was about 10 years of age, Dad came home fuming. Yes. He was really angry, and I was a, I was a bit, you know, the bank had just put the interest rate on the home loan, the farm loan, from two and a half to two and three quarter percent. Yes. And he was fuming. I do all the work, floods, droughts, da da. That bloke sits in his office, air conditioned, his white shirt, he doesn't do anything. And besides, we had an agreement. This was occurring in outback Australia or? No, no, in northern New South Wales on a dairy farm, 100 yes. acre dairy farm. We had cows and pigs and we grew everything and etc. And um, there's no council nonsense. We built a big shed and you just did what you needed to do and wanted to do. But I, recall, I remember that. It didn't mean a lot to me at age 10. But um, some years later, when I was early 20s, I moved to Brisbane. I wanted to be a survey draftsman, which I became. And I was invited to a political meeting one night. Well, that didn't gel with me because I was working a lot of overtime, I was playing music in a band two nights a week, I was going to college three nights a week. Anyway, I went along to this meeting and there was a man there named Jeremy Lee and he had a, a wooden tripod and some canvas sheets over it and he was talking about a whole lot of things and it all made sense to me. Roughly what time or era, what that year would that have been? 1968, something in that era. That would have been a, a time of, of uh, upheaval, turmoil, quite revolutionary attitudes emerging. Not really. I wasn't interested in the hippie scene or any of that stuff. And besides, I was too busy. Yes. I, I wasn't chasing girls down the coast. I was working overtime and I was playing music and going to college. So I get to this meeting and I thought, oh, this is going to be good, you know. It's about four hours later, and everyone said, well, why are you stopping? This made a lot of sense. And at that meeting, I bought the book by Gary Allen called None Dare Call It Conspiracy. Yes. And I took that home, and that was a big, hang on, this can't be true. How come the president of America has to ask a millionaire whether he can go to war or not? You know, a whole lot of things. And they got into all the levels of the Illuminati and that sort of stuff, which I didn't reject, but at least it went in. Would this have been post the assassination of President John F. Kennedy? No, Kennedy was assassinated in 64. Um, it was about that time, but I remember that night of that, I remember waking up about one o'clock in the morning and I saw it on TV. Uh, I didn't get up to watch TV, the TV had been left on and Kennedy's been shot, you know, but that didn't it made uh, none they called a conspiracy come to life a bit. But um, as in 19, bearing in mind of what Dad had told me about the bank changing the agreement and you know, wanting more money, etc. And I wrote the Earth plus five percent. I want the Earth plus five percent, which is a simple parable. And I found you can communicate a lot better with simple parables than you can with hours of logic and reason. I know you've mentioned to me your your book, your writings called Earth Plus Five yeah. Percent. Can you tell the viewers where they could access that information today? Because yes. I know it was written in 1971, but yeah. the information okay. would still be relevant or Absolutely. valid. Absolutely, yeah. it's more relevant right now than whatever was. You can find it on my site, LarryHannigan.com, and you'll see DVDs and you know, there's a lot on that site and which is where the early beginnings of the site came from because at Jeremy's meeting he, he had lots of newspaper clippings and bits out of books and remember there was no internet, there was um, no image, you know, you had to get it. And I started, um, and I wrote the Earth Plus 5%, it was just an audio cassette which really took off very well. I didn't do it to make money, but I did make a few dollars out of it, um, at a dollar a pop. And um, so I started to investigate video, which is just starting to come in. The 
remember there was no internet, there was no the most complicated calculator you hold in the hand, etc. Um, so um, I started editing with two VHS machines, crash editing them together so the quality was not all that great. And then um, I went, you know, I started to mix with people and I wrote the voice of the Australian flag, mainly as an emotional thing because a flag is nothing, it's just a piece of rag, but it's what it means and what people are. And I started to investigate the history of that, so I wrote the voice of the Australian flag and the man who spoke on that is a long gone, but his name was John Downs, the most beautiful voice. And when we were doing the recording, he came into the booth and said, Larry, I hate you. And I said, why? What's wrong with this? He'd just done the voice, no music, yes. no editing, it was just the voice, cold voice. He said, I was a Republican an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so that led to, uh, I then did the voice of the RSL, getting all their favourite poems and hymns and, and tunes and stories, etc. And John didn't charge me for that. Initially I had to pay him because I didn't know, he was just a professional voiceover man. and. So that then led, a bit later on, uh, I started to learn a few things, the voice of the Constitution. Well, uh, I got divorced under not happy situation, and I got, went to court for the first time in my life, and I found out the absolute corruption that goes on in the court. They were not interested in me or my wife. All they wanted to know was how much money they can get out of us. Because I recall the very first question when we were both in there, and the judge says, what is the pool? In other words, how much have they got? Exactly. That was the very first question. I recall that very well. Um, I didn't have a solicitor, I, and I was told they wouldn't talk to me, wouldn't answer letters, unless I had a solicitor. I've since found out, found out why. Because they're in collusion. The judge and the two solicitors go and have coffee afterwards. Whose turn is it to win this time? That's what I think goes on. So the voice of the Constitution, I started to meet people who knew a heck of a lot more about it, and I learned a lot from them. Um, I won't say any names at this point, but there are a lot of people now who have a lot of knowledge. And my initial idea of the website was to put up the voice of the flag, the voice of the Constitution, and try and sell a few of my music CDs. Because you're a musician as well. Oh yes, that's always been a hobby though. But I enjoy it, it's a great hobby. Um, so that was the purpose of the website. And that, I just left it at that for a while. But as things came along and I said, oh, that's got to go along. I'll, I'll tell people through the website. And it was very small, you know, I was getting massive 10, 12 hits a day sort of thing. Um, and so that's where the website came from was, and now I've since got very interested in other things. And I have found myself, it's easier to talk in parables to explain principles. And you'll find there lots of parables which are mostly in written form. On your website? Uh, on the website, you go down the bottom and you'll see um, all the different categories and other articles. The topics. To various topics on there. And um, so I have, the website was written for me. Obviously I'm not that clever, but I can drive it and I can put things on and edit them. And, and then in recent times, um, the input from Wayne Glue has really in, um, enlightened a lot of people about what's really going on. And you start to realize the utter corruption that exists in all of society. Like many good people go and get on their local council, they're going to do good things or they get into the parliament with noble intentions and if they step out of life they are squashed, ridiculed, look at Barnaby Joyce, whether he's a good man or not doesn't matter, whether Rod Culleton, uh, Pauline Hanson would love him or hate him, Look what happens to them when they start to raise issues that most, most Australians uh, are concerned about. 